Hey folks, so many people have been asking how to use Falcon LLM, especially the 40 billion parameter one with Flowwise. So I thought I'll make a quick video which walks you through the process of deploying and using Falcon LLM with Flowwise. And not just that, you can apply this to many of the open source models on Hugging Face. So let's look at how that could be done. So I just want to walk you through how you can run Falcon models or pretty much uh, a large number of models from Hugging Face with Flowwise. So if those are smaller in size, it's easy to run. We just copy the model name and the API token. Let's kind of go through that. I'll start with a simple LLM chain and we will call these models and the way we can call this is using the hugging face LLM inference block and what I'm going to be doing is I'll connect this together and second is to provide a prompt so I'm going to use a prompt template in this case and then just Attach that, so that's good. So I'm going to need Hugging Face API key. So in your access token in your account uh, in Hugging Face, you can create a new token, um, read or write. So in this case, read works fine. So I'm going to take that. And once we provide that, then the second is to provide the model name. So that's what we're going to take. And we'll paste that. You can have a prompt template. So maybe I'll start with, tell me a joke uh, topic. And that's the topic that we'll get from the user. So let's save this. I'm going to call this Hugging Face LLM, so HF LLM. Save this and call this. And the topic is what we're supposed to provide. So I'm going to say, progress nation so since the model is small enough it calls the hugging face inference block which calls hugging face model and then we get a response back so this is for any of the smaller models now if you were to try this with a 40 billion parameter model then it's most likely not going to work and it's going to give you some error or it will just take too long and some error after that. So the way we can get these models, larger size models working is first is you might want to create an account with this hugging face inference endpoint. This is where you can pretty much select model, choose the cloud and security level and then just deploy the model. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go to the model page. So this is the model I would like to deploy. So I'm going to say deploy in an inference point. And in here, it selected the model repo for us. So that's good. It created an endpoint name for us. But that's fine as well. And now we have an option to select one of the cloud providers. I'm going to use um, AWS as I don't see an option to use GPU with Azure yet, at least for my account. So I'm going to use Azure. And then in this, I'll select uh, something in North America. So there are now options to select different GPUs. I'll go with this. So now you'll see that there is a cost involved, of course, because we're going to be using their GPUs. You can select whichever is appropriate. So in some cases, it says model may be too large to select. In that case, I'll probably go with T4. And then there's also option for NVIDIA A100. Now, this is something you might have to ask additional permissions from Hugging Face. So I'll go with T4. And with that, if you'd like to have some additional configuration, that's fine. I'm going to make this public because I would like to use the API endpoint without authentication in Flowwise. And with that, I'm just going to say create endpoint. Now, since this is a large model and it does require some amount of initialization time, you can follow in the logs 
there are going to be some updates in the log but i have seen that is this might take about 10 to 15 minutes or so just to get the model initialized first time and the downside is that there is going to be a usage cost um, involved with this initialization as well so just remember that the model is going to cost you while initializing and while using uh, in both cases so what i'm going to do is i'll probably just wait until this is completed and we'll come back and we'll use the endpoints from this page okay just as an update so it's already about 10 minutes and it charged about 75 cents for this particular instance and it's still initializing so uh, it does take a, you know, a few minutes to get everything running you can look at the logs and you do notice that there are a few things happening in the background um so we'll wait until it's completed so it took about 12 minutes or so and it got the instance running and now we can go to the overview and in here there are a few important things so one is this endpoint url so this is what we're going to be copying and then we'll use it in our flow wise in the additional parameters section so i'll add it in here as the endpoint so that's one now this is not the name that we're using and also the api key is not from a personal account so when you deploy this there is um, a separate api key that you'll have to create for your instance or the inference endpoint so i created an account as a an organization so then i can use the api key for that organization and that's going to be different than the one that we saw previously with the uh, personal account so in here i can go to my api account and then i can copy the token for this particular account and then paste in here and that should take care of the model url and also the api key i don't necessarily think that the model name is important i have tried both ways but let's see how this works so we'll save the flow and then we'll ask another question to write a joke about i'll say socks okay got the response but it seems like it didn't like the the prompt template so maybe we'll fix that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the endpoint and there are a couple of examples that you can use to check if the model is working fine. So I'm going to test this endpoint. So I just selected a random example and then I said my name is Thomas and my main and then compute and it generates this for us. So just to kind of keep it similar, I'm going to use the same template that they provided and I'm going to just use it in my prompt as well so we'll probably paste in here and let's see how that works with the new prompt template i'm going to save this again and then i'll just ask the topic so my name is thomas and my hobby is to play guitar and a member of so it's trying to continue so this looks better so perhaps maybe we'll have to look at the prompt template and how that works so maybe i'll increase the token size so maybe i'll make this 200 and with this it should increase the size of the response so maybe right now my name is thomas and my main support interest is cycling on of cycling so that's nice just to make sure maybe increase a little more and then save this run again so now if you do increase the token max tokens it is going to take some longer time since it's just going to be um, creating a longer response and once we have that it's going to return that value now there's also an option in here that you can check some analytics if there were requests or not and then also you can check if there was any usage or cost involved so so far since it's about 20 minutes there is some cost involved with that so let's go back 
Okay, so it gave me an error saying that it has to be less than 250. Let's go back in, make this 250. Save this, ask the question again. Okay, with that, it generated a response. So it seems like there is some amount of repetition going on here. So with that, you can, of course, go in and change some of these values, especially the frequency penalty. And then perhaps, you know, you can get to some response that works in your case. Now, again, some of these are probably not going to be as good as GPT or Cohere's uh, generation endpoints, but then at least you have an option to get started. And as we have seen, there is also the template, the prompt template involved that is going to be uh, something you can test with in your particular case. In addition, I tried using both with or without model, uh, especially if there is an endpoint available, give it a try, maybe that there is a um, need for this model to be provided, perhaps to to make it faster. But that is something that I haven't tested myself. So with that, what you'll have to look at is for any given model, if there is an option to deploy with inference endpoint, then you basically select that inference endpoint option and that will take you to a deployment page and in here you can deploy and just to make sure you're not incurring these costs make sure to pause the instance and with that as long as it's paused it's not going to be built so in this case i'll pause it for now and any of the endpoints that you deploy you will have that in your account so you can always go back in and restart and then use in your application. And if you'd like to learn in depth on these topics, please check my upcoming course at builtbyu.com, where we're going to build AI apps using Langchain and understand Langchain library in details. Also, if you are a business or an organization and you'd like for us to build your Langchain applications, reach out to us at menloparklab.com. With that, hopefully you're able to run Falcon with Flowwise and are able to ask questions or chat with the model.